The Life of Satoru Gojo, Jujutsu Kaisen Satoru Gojo is one of the main protagonists of the Jujutsu Kaisen series. He's a special grade Jujutsu sorcerer and widely recognized as the strongest in the world. Satoru is the pride of the Gojo family, the first person to inherit both the Limitless and the Six Eyes in 400 years. He works as a teacher at the Tokyo Jujutsu High and uses his influence to protect and train strong young allies. Welcome to the Magi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Satoru Gojo. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. We also ask, would you kindly check if you're subscribed? Because uh, YouTube does this thing where it unsubscribes people from channels uh, and people don't notice. So um, yeah, if, if you haven't subscribed, please check. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel. So if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media accounts. Help us reach our goal of passing 100k followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background. Satoru Gojo was born on December 7th, 1989. After he was born, the balance of power shifted, and Gojo had a bounty put on his head and was targeted by bounty hunters. During his second year as a student, Gojo, along with his classmates, Suguru Geto and Shoko Yeri, went to check up on Meimei and Utahime after not hearing from them in two days. After the three managed to rescue Meimei and Utahime along with dealing with the curse, Geto, along with Gojo and Shoko, attend a meeting where Masamichi Yaga punishes Gojo for not putting up a curtain. Later, Geto is in the classroom with Gojo and Shoko, where they discuss the importance of a curtain. Geto and Gojo then get into an argument about the strong protecting the weak, which almost ends with them fighting. Suddenly, Masamichi enters the room and gives Geto and Gojo a mission from Master Tengen. Masamichi explains to the two about the importance of the mission and that they will look out for two groups who want to stop them. After being informed about the mission, Gojo and Geto head out. As they arrive at the location to pick up the vessel for the mission, an explosion happens and the vessel falls to the ground. Before the vessel hits the ground, Gojo helps Geto save the vessel. Gojo is then confronted by a member of Q, Bayer. Gojo easily defeats Bayer and meets up with Geto and the vessel, Riko Amanai. Gojo along with Geto introduce themselves to Riko. The three then start to talk and Riko explains how she's not upset about fusing with Tengen. After talking, Gojo and Geto bring Riko to her junior high, since she forced them to, so that she can visit her friend. Once they arrive at the school, Gojo calls Masamichi, who explains how they have to oblige Riko before she fuses with Tengen. After talking with Masamichi, they decide to check the surveillance spirits, and Geto tells him that two have been exercised. Gojo and Misato head out to protect Riko, while Geto deals with the intruders. Gojo manages to find Riko and drags her off to take her to Jujutsu High. On the way, Gojo is contacted by Geto, who informs him about the situation. Suddenly, the two encounter multiple opponents, and Gojo figures out that the opponent is using the clone technique to increase his numbers. Gojo manages to defeat their opponent, but Riko informs him that Misato had been captured by the enemy. Gojo and Rika meet up with Geto, and they discuss what to do next. They decide to save Misato and head to Okinawa for the meeting spot with the kidnappers. They manage to save Misato and decide to have some fun before heading back. When it's time to head back to the school, Riko manages to convince them to stay for one more day. Geto asks if Gojo's alright since he notices that Geto hasn't put down his technique for a while now, but Gojo says that he's fine and they continue to have fun. The next day, the four head back to Jujutsu High but are attacked when they arrive. Gojo tells the others to head inside while he takes care of the enemy. Gojo fights the enemy but notices that he can't read his opponent's moves because the enemy has no cursed energy. When he loses trace of the enemy, Gojo decides to sweep the field with one of his techniques. After sweeping the field, Gojo figures that his opponent won't be able to sneak up on him, but the enemy manages to block Gojo's vision with multiple cursed spirits. Gojo wonders what to do, but the enemy, Toji, attacks and manages to wound Gojo. Gojo manages to recover and head off to the Star Religious Group's base to retrieve Riko's body. Once there, he confronts the enemy and explains how he managed to survive. Gojo then takes on Toji once more and after a couple of exchanges, but manages to kill him with his hollow technique, Purple. Gojo then heads inside of the Star Religious Group's base and manages to retrieve Riko's body. Gojo suggests that they take care of everyone there, but Geto tells him that there's no reason to do so since their group will be disbanded soon enough. A year later, Geto and Shoko are helping Gojo with his techniques. Gojo explains how he's able to continuously use his technique without causing harm to himself. Days later, Gojo is informed that Geto is on the run after having massacred an entire village along with killing his own parents. Gojo is contacted by Shoko who tells him that Geto is in Shinjuku. Gojo heads over to Shinjuku and manages to confront Geto. The two then talk about how Geto plans to kill every non-sorcerer in the world. When Geto starts to walk away, Gojo thinks about how he can't bring himself to kill Geto. Gojo meets with Masamichi and the two talk about how strong he is after that. Sometime later, Gojo meets with a young Megumi Fushiguro, the son of Toji, the enemy that he was just fighting, and the two talk about Megumi's father and the Zenin family. 
When Megumi says that he doesn't care about his dad anymore since he hasn't been around for a while, Gojo tells Megumi to just ask him if he wants to know anything about his dad. Gojo then asks if he wants to go to the Zenin family, to which Megumi says that his answer will depend if his sister will be happy if they go. Gojo tells Megumi that his sister would not be happy, and that he will take care of things, and that Megumi should focus on getting strong from now on. Cursed Child Arc Several years have passed, and Gojo talks with the higher-ups about Yuta Okotsu, manages to convince them to push off his execution and to let Yuta join Jujutsu High. When Yuta decides to stay in isolation, Gojo hands over and convinces him to join the school. Gojo then brings Yuta to Jujutsu High and introduces him to his new classmates, Maki Zenin, Panda, and Toge Inumaki. As the three prepare to attack Yuta, Gojo tries to warn them, but Rika shows up to defend Yuta. Gojo tells the class of Yuta's situation and introduces the class to Yuta. Gojo then pairs the students up for their lesson. Gojo brings Maki and Yuta to an elementary school and explains that they'll be exercising curses and saving two children that have disappeared. Gojo then puts up a screen and leaves the two of them to handle the rest. When Yuta unleashes Rika to handle the spirit, Gojo comments on the intensity of the spirit. After Yuta manages to handle the situation, Gojo brings them to a hospital and informs Yuta that the two boys and Maki will be alright. Gojo then talks with Yuta on how he plans to release Rika from the curse that he most likely placed on her. Gojo then takes Yuta to another location and gives him a katana. He explains to Yuta that he'll need to pour the powers of the curse through the katana in order to break the curse, and that Yuta will need to train with the katana first. Sometime later, Gojo meets with a higher-up and informs them about the kind of curse Rika is. After the meeting, Gojo heads towards his students while complaining about the higher-ups. He watches as Yuta and Maki train until he assigns Yuta and Toge on a mission. When Yuta wonders about Toge, Gojo explains who Toge is and what he's capable of. He also tells Yuta that he'll be observing Toge only and that he shouldn't let Rika out. After the mission's complete, Gojo is informed about what had happened during the mission. Later, Gojo meets with Masamicha about Geto and rushes to the first years after Geto arrives at the school. When Gojo tells Geto to leave the first years alone, Geto responds by saying that he'll start an all-out war on a certain day. Once Geto leaves, Gojo attends a meeting where they discuss the course of action. On December 24th, Gojo is at Shinjuku and wonders why Geto's not at the front lines. Suddenly, Kiyotaka tells Gojo about what he had found out about Yuta, and Gojo figures out that Geto is at the school. Gojo then uses his powers to send Toge and Panda back to the school. When the war starts, he takes on Miguel and manages to easily overpower him. Once all of Geto's comrades leave, Gojo heads over to the school and confronts Geto. After having a chat with Geto, Gojo deals with him. Gojo then meets with his student and informs Yuta that he's a distant relative of his. When Rika's curse is undone, Gojo says that it was Yuta who had cursed her and congratulates him on undoing the curse. Later, Gojo is with Yuta and informs him about Geto. He then gives him back his student ID that Geto has. Fearsome Womb Arc Gojo arrives at Tsukisawa 3rd High School to check up on the situation and finds out that Yuji has eaten one of Sukuna's fingers. Gojo decides to check how strong Yuji Itadori is by seeing if Yuji can take his body back after letting Sukuna have control for 10 seconds. Gojo then takes on Sukuna and after 10 seconds, Yuji takes back his body. Afterwards, Gojo knocks Yuji out to see if Sukuna takes over after Yuji wakes up. He then asks what Megumi thinks they should do, to which Megumi replies that they should execute Yuji but doesn't want him to die. Megumi also asks for Gojo's help, and his teacher agrees to do something about it. Later, when Yuji wakes up, Gojo greets him and introduces himself. He also informs Yuji that his execution has been sent and explains the reasons that they're going to suspend their execution. Gojo also explains who Sukuna is and how in order to finally exercise Sukuna, Yuji has to eat all of Sukuna's fingers before being executed. After allowing Yuji to meet with his friends, Gojo meets with him and asks for his decision. Yuji inquires about the casualties caused by curses, which Gojo explains. Yuji then requests for one of Sukuna's fingers, and Gojo hands it over to him. Yuji manages to maintain control after consuming the finger, leading Gojo to conclude that Yuji can keep Sukuna in check. Gojo advises Yuji to prepare for school since he'll be joining as one of the only three first-year students. After arriving at Jujutsu High, Gojo escorts Yuji to his interview with Principal Masamichi and warns him that he might fail the interview if he makes a mistake. Suddenly, Sukuna communicates through a mouth he creates on Yuji and shares his thoughts on the school, mentioning his intention to kill Gojo first due to a debt. Gojo considers it an honor. Gojo then accompanies Yuji to Masamichi, observes Yuji's interview, and celebrates when Yuji is accepted into Jujutsu High. He later takes Yuji to his room, where he explains that Yuji has become Sukuna's vessel and can now locate Sukuna's fingers like a radar. When Megumi emerges from his neighboring room, Gojo informs them that they'll be picking up the third first-year student tomorrow. The following day, Gojo takes Megumi and Yuji to Harajuku to collect the final first-year student, Nobara. Afterward, he leads them to Roppongi for a mission, despite disappointing Nobara and Yuji. 
Upon reaching the mission site, Gojo reveals that only Nobara and Yuji will enter because he wants to test them. Gojo also provides Yuji with a cursed tool since he can't use Jujutsu yet and instructs him not to release Sukuna. While Megumi waits outside with Gojo, Nobara and Yuji head in. During the wait, Gojo explains his rationale for testing them. When a spirit attempts to escape, Gojo prevents Megumi from exercising it to allow Nobara to do so. After completing the mission, Gojo decides to take them out to eat. Two weeks later, Gojo goes on a business trip, which prevents him from taking the first-year students on a mission. After the mission at the detention center that resulted in Yuji's death, he meets Kiyotaka at the morgue. He discusses how the higher-ups planned Yuji's death during the mission and expresses the idea of eliminating them all. When Shoko arrives to examine the body, he instructs her to make good use of it. As Shoko prepares for her examination, he explains to Kiyotaka why he became a teacher. Just as Shoko is about to begin her examination, he watches as Yuji suddenly returns to life. He greets Yuji upon his return and then departs with Shoko. They discuss how they want Yuji to remain listed as deceased on paper to help him become stronger. Subsequently, he takes Yuji to a room to train him in the art of Jujutsu, which excites Yuji. He proceeds to explain how cursed power and techniques work and even demonstrates them. He also emphasizes the role of emotions in controlling cursed power and informs Yuji that he'll train by watching movies. Gojo provides Yuji with a cursed corpse that attacks individuals not emitting a constant flow of cursed power and states that Yuji will watch movies with it. While Yuji starts watching the movies, Gojo leaves to meet with Principal Masamichi. While being driven to the meeting with Kyotaka, Gojo has Kyotaka stop the car. He gets out and instructs Kiyotaka to proceed without him. After Kiyotaka departs, he's attacked by Jogo, but remains unharmed. He reflects on Jogo being an unregistered special grade spirit and speculates that Jogo might be stronger than the current Sukuna. Jogo continues his assault, but he's unharmed by his attempts. As Jogo wonders why Gojo remains unscathed, he explains how his ability works and that even though Jogo can't touch him, he can easily touch Jogo. He then attacks Jogo by kicking him, sending Jogo flying. When Jogo attempts to counterattack, he easily dodges and strikes back. He then returns to retrieve Yuji so Yuji can witness the fight. As he rejoins the fight, Jogo remarks on how Yuji will be a hindrance for him. He responds that it won't matter since Jogo is weak, which angers Jogo. He instructs Yuji not to leave his side as Jogo ensnares them with his domain expansion. Confused, Yuji receives an explanation from him about what domain expansion is and how it functions. He then employs his own domain expansion to ensnare Jogo and explains to both Jogo and Yuji how his technique works. He destroys Jogo's body and begins to interrogate him. Suddenly, he and Yuji are distracted, giving Hanami a chance to rescue Jogo. He and Yuji attempt to stop them, but the two have already escaped. Gojo then informs Yuji that he'll train him to become stronger in exchange for information. Days later, he meets with Doshinobu and discusses how the wave of power sealed by older generations will soon be unleashed. As Yoshinobu becomes angry with him, he declares he's done talking and departs, but not before informing Yoshinobu that Masamichi will arrive two hours later. Versus Mahito Arc a month later, Gojo has Nanami accompany Yuji on a mission since he can't. After the mission is finished, Gojo meets up with Nanami and Yuji. Gojo seems relieved that Nanami didn't tell Yuji about them retrieving one of Sukuna's cursed fingers from Junpei Yoshino's home. Kyoto Goodwill Event Arc On the day of the Kyoto Goodwill Event, Gojo is with Nanami as they discuss what had happened during the mission that Yuji was on. When Yuji arrives, excited about meeting the others, Gojo tells Yuji that they have to make it a surprise and explains his reasoning. Yuji agrees with Gojo and wonders what he has to do. Later, Gojo meets up with the Tokyo and Kyoto students along with the faculty and reveals that Yuji is still alive. As Yoshinobu seems shocked, Gojo mocks him about this. Gojo then helps to explain how the event will be held to the students and explains that there might be a spy and he wants Utahime to investigate the Kyoto school. When Utahime asks what if she's the mole, Gojo simply replies that she's too weak to be the mole and she throws her cup of tea at him. Before the event starts, Gojo meets up with the other faculty to watch the event. As the event starts, Gojo watches it through monitors with the other faculties. During the event, Meimei notices how strong Maki is and wonders why she hasn't been promoted. Gojo explains that her family is getting in the way and also points out how the video around Yuji seems inconsistent. Gojo thinks that they have something up their sleeve, but Yuji isn't the same Yuji he once was. As another cursed spirit is exercised, Gojo wonders if the students have forgotten about their main objective. When intruders invade the site, Gojo heads over to the site along with Utahime and Yoshinobu. As they head over, Yoshinobu tells Gojo to get into the area before the screen is complete. But Gojo notices that the effect of the screen is already done. As the three reach the site, they find out that he is the only one that can't enter the screen. 
Gojo tells the two to head in so they can help the others. After some time passes, Gojo finally manages to break into the barrier. He decides to handle Juzo first, and easily manages to restrain him. Gojo then uses Hollow Purple on Hanami, but they can't tell for sure if Hanami's killed. After the intruders have been dealt with, Gojo attends a meeting with the other faculty members where they discuss everything that had happened during the invasion, and how they managed to get nothing from Juzo. As Masamichi says that the event is over, Gojo notes that this is not for them to decide. Gojo then meets with his students, and they settle on continuing the event. When it's decided that they'll play a game of baseball, Gojo acts as the umpire for the game. Death Painting Arc Days later, Gojo calls Utahime to talk about what his students have done and wonders if she had found something out about the mole in the midst. After hanging up on Utahime, Gojo thinks about how he's counting on Meimei, who transfers 10 million yen, which is around $90,000, via bank account. Shibuya Incident Arc Sometime later, Gojo is asleep when Yuji, Megumi, and Nobara arrive at his location. Gojo wakes up and sends the three to where Utahime is at. On October 31st, Gojo enters the curtain that was erected over Shibuya. As Gojo makes his way through the crowd of people, he figures what the enemy's intentions are and decides to move towards the basement. As Gojo reaches the underground subway, he's confronted by Jogo, Hanami, and Choso. Gojo then prepares to fight against the three. As Hanami starts to block all the exits, Gojo tells them that it's not necessary since he's not planning to run away. The cursed spirits then have the trapped people surround them and start to attack Gojo. When Jogo and Hanami attack using the domain amplification technique on Gojo, Gojo manages to dodge it. He thinks about how domain amplification works and how he's now vulnerable to their attacks. When Jogo comments about how Gojo was not going to run away, Gojo replies that he's surprised that the cursed spirits thought they could defeat him with their tiny brains. Gojo takes off his blindfold around his eyes and says that he'll first take Hanami down since Hanami hasn't learned their lesson after facing him twice before. As Gojo gets closer to Jogo and Hanami, Jogo and Hanami attack Gojo. Gojo manages to dodge their attacks and even manages to rip Jogo's arm off. As Jogo goes to distance himself from the fight, Gojo chases after him. Hanami figures that Gojo is not using his curse technique and decides to try and attack with their technique, but Jogo tells Hanami not to do it. Gojo quickly grabs a hole of Hanami and breaks the branches off of Hanami's head. Suddenly, Choso attacks Gojo, but Gojo easily blocks the attack. Gojo figures out that Choso is one of the cursed womb death paintings and how he's not attacking like Hanami and Jogo. Suddenly, Hanami and Jogo attack, but Gojo tells them that this attack won't work since Hanami is currently weakened. Gojo then uses his curse technique to crush Hanami against the wall. After killing Hanami, Gojo tells Jogo that he's next. Jogo and Choso continue to attack Gojo, but all their attacks don't work. Gojo thinks about how the two are attacking from a distance, and that's all they can do. Gojo notices that the people are starting to avoid him, and thinks about how he'll be able to get to Jogo once enough people scatter. Gojo thinks about how he wants to fight the two, and that he won't be able to save them all. Gojo then comments about how he'll exercise the cursed spirits. When a train full of mutated humans arrive and start attacking the people, Gojo wonders what they're thinking. As Mahito attacks Gojo, Gojo easily dodges and counters, but Mahito dodges. When more humans are sent to their location, Gojo thinks about how the entrance to their location is open, and how that there are more people being thrown to their location. Gojo is then distracted when Mahito and Choso attack, but all it does is kill the humans around him. When Jogo suddenly attacks, Gojo grabs a hold of Jogo's arm, but Jogo cuts it off to get away. Gojo then activates his domain expansion for less than a second, which stuns cursed spirits and humans. After undoing his domain expansion, Gojo begins to kill all the mutated humans. After taking care of all the mutated humans, Gojo notices a small box on the floor. The box opens, appearing what looks like a stretched piece of skin with an eye the size of a face staring back at Gojo. Gojo stares at the eye before deciding to leave, but freezes when he hears a familiar voice. Walking up from behind him was his once deceased best friend, Suguru Geto. Gojo's confusion about Geto's apparent revival causes one minute of time to pass within his mind as he flashes back on all of the memories with him. This causes the box's sealing condition to be fulfilled, and it wraps itself around Gojo. He realizes that this is checkmate, since he's unable to move and his cursed energy is seemingly nullified. Gojo asks who the person in front of him is, but the person says that he's Geto. Gojo says that even though his six eyes ability is telling him that the person in front of him is Geto, his soul knows that the person in front of him is not Geto. The imposter in front of him reveals that Gojo is correct and that he's capable of switching bodies by switching brains and therefore is able to covet said body's curse technique. The person also says that he'll unseal Gojo in a thousand years after they finish their plan. Gojo warns the imposter that even though he'll be trapped, he should still be worried about Yuta Okotsu. The imposter explains how Yuta had become so powerful 
but still won't be able to become the next Gojo. The imposter then bids Gojo farewell as he prepares to seal Gojo within the prison realm. Before being sealed, Gojo asks Geto how long he plans to let someone else take control of his body when Geto's arm suddenly grabs his own neck. The imposter laughs and comments on how this was the first time an inhabited body disobeyed him. The grip isn't tight, and the imposter calls Mahito over and the two continue a philosophical discussion on what came first, the body or the soul. After listening to the two ramble, Gojo tells the imposter to just seal him away already, since he's getting tired of listening to them. The imposter then seals Gojo in the prison gate's boundary. Geto is holding the cube when it begins to shake and then pummels to the ground by an unforeseen force, shattering the floor on impact. Due to Gojo's massive amount of power, the prison realm is having a hard time processing his power, and Gojo was able to use its technique to force the prison gate's boundary to the ground, to the annoyance of the imposter. Inside the seal, Gojo comments on how he had messed up, but reassures himself that everything will be fine and that he still has faith in everyone. Itadori's Examination Arc After the events of the Shibuya incident, Gojo has been deemed an accomplice and is permanently exiled from the Jujutsu society. Removing his seal is now considered a criminal act, and anyone who does remove the seal will be considered a traitor. Culling Game Arc Due to the efforts of Hanakurusu, Yuji Itadori, and many others, Gojo is eventually unsealed and upon his unsealing confronts Kenjaku and attempts to kill him, but is prevented from doing so by Sukuna. Gojo insults Sukuna, angering a nearby Uroume, who he defeats in one blow. Gojo then inquires what day it is, and Kenjaku tells him it is the 18th of November and that the three agree to fight on the 24th of December. Later, Gojo meets up with Choko and Ichiji to talk about Nanami's death, and Ina walks in to tell them something. Later, Gakuganji talks with Gojo and questions why he didn't retaliate on him for killing Aga. Gojo states it's because he knows the higher-ups ordered him to do it and that he personally feels responsible for getting sealed and left unable to protect Yaga. Gojo states he believes Gakuganji is trustworthy to an extent, as he never divulged Yaga's method of creating cursed corpses. Utahime and Gakuganji then accompany him to fight with Tsukuna when Yuji and the other students wish him good luck. Shinjuku Shodan Arc on the day of the fight, Utehime uses her cursed technique to amplify Gojo's maximum cursed energy output, causing him to launch a far more powerful hollow purple on Tsukuna, burning off his arm in the process. Trading insults on the challenger of the fight, Tsukuna and Gojo begin the fight by warming up, Gojo throwing Tsukuna around with blue and Tsukuna responding by cutting a building nearby Gojo before they cause a lot of collateral damage upon clashing attacks, to which he comes out unscathed. Eventually, both Gojo and Tsukuna open their domain expansions, Unlimited Void clashing with Malevolent Shrine. While the two domains prove equally strong and refined, Malevolent Shrine's range of attacks reaches even beyond Gojo's barrier and is able to eventually destroy Gojo's barrier, immediately causing the Malevolent Shrine's sure hit effect to slash Gojo's neck. Gojo survives by healing himself using reverse curse technique. But as Malevolent Shrine keeps attacking Gojo, he's forced to focus his full output on reverse curse techniques as he's slashed all over his body. Gojo tries to run away from Malevolent Shrine's range, but Tsukuna quickly starts engaging him again, with Gojo just managing to fend off the King of Curses as he notices that the center of Malevolent Shrine is Tsukuna himself and not the Shrine. Gojo uses new shadow style simple domain to counter Malevolent Shrine's effects, buying him the time to properly heal the cuts he received. But as the simple domain is quickly torn apart, Gojo stops healing himself and uses simple domain to fight off Sukuna long enough to use reverse curse techniques to replenish his burned out curse technique. He quickly latches himself onto Sukuna and uses red on Sukuna, sending him flying into the shrine as he fully heals himself. Taunting Sukuna to use his maximum rage as he stands a few meters outside of the range of Malevolent Shrine as Sukuna immediately grants Gojo his wish. Gojo opens his domain once again, this time reversing the outer and inner conditions of his domain barrier to make Unlimited Void's outer shell strong against attacks from the outside. They engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with Sukuna using domain amplification at a higher output than before, but Gojo quickly notices that the effect of Malevolent Shrine was turned off within his barrier. Along with realizing that Sukuna had focused all of his strength in a short hit effect on the outside while he engaged in Gojo in close range to avoid the short hit of Gojo's domain, countering the now stronger barrier allowing him to once more shatter Gojo's domain. However, now prepared for such a scenario, Gojo immediately activates Falling Blossom Emotion to defend himself and is able to weaken the slashes of Malevolent Shrine. As he muses on how he learned it as a child and while he didn't need to use it after mastering his domain, he then expands his domain once more, at first enlarging the barrier to encompass all of Sukuna's range before he then shrinks the barrier to a size smaller than a basketball using his experience in the prison realm. Although Sukuna responded by reducing Malevolent Shrine's range to increase his curse technique's output, this time Gojo's reinforced outer shell proved able to withstand Malevolent Shrine long enough to injure Sukuna to the point where he wasn't able to maintain his domain, collapsing Malevolent Shrine as well. 
However, despite finally getting back at the King of Curses, Gojo starts to consider Sukuna's lack of usage of the Ten Shadows inside Unlimited Void, specifically Mahoraga, although he soon gets a nosebleed and starts to feel dizzy. Still, both of them activate their domain, and yet again, Gojo proves to be stronger in fighting inside a domain as he injures Sukuna's face, and both Sukuna's and Gojo's domain breaks at the same time. On the next time they open their domain, Gojo is able to cast his slightly faster than Tsukuna to hit Tsukuna with Unlimited Void for just 0.01 seconds, which weakens Tsukuna and Malevolent Shrine, allowing Gojo to finally overpower Tsukuna's domain decisively and shatter it, fully exposing Tsukuna to Unlimited Void. To capture Tsukuna, Gojo aims to destroy not only Tsukuna's heart, but also his lungs and liver, in order to effectively incapacitate him by bringing him closer to death than Yuji was at the juvenile detention center. However, Tsukuna manages to summon Maharaga, and Maharaga reveals it's adapted to his domain as Gojo fails to destroy it in one shot using red. Stunned, Gojo analyzes the situation and realizes Sukuna had used Megami's soul to bear the burden of adaptation for Maharaga. The strain of healing his burned out curse technique catches up to Gojo as his nose bleeds and collapses due to essentially having burned the right prefrontal cortex and then healing it leaving him unable to open his domain to one-shot Maharaga. But Tsukuna too has sustained a similar degree of damage to his brain due to taking Unlimited Void just briefly, leaving them both at the situation where they can't use their domain expansion. Gojo taunts Tsukuna before he and Tsukuna engage in the second round of their fighting, Gojo opening the next round by striking Tsukuna using blue. As the fight continues, Gojo uses blue to manipulate the environment against Tsukuna as he tries to land decisive blows using hand-to-hand -hand combat, but Tsukuna is able to keep up with him and use domain amplification to force him back. Unfazed, Gojo deduces domain amplification blocks out Maharaga's adaptation, and after a brief exchange, he deduces Maharaga needs three more spins to adapt. Confidently declaring he will kill Sukuna before that happens, Gojo starts to intensify the rhythm as he begins to take a visible damage, using blue in various ways and managing to land some effective shots in hand-to-hand -hand combat before using red. Even though Sukuna uses domain amplification to neutralize the output, Gojo, already anticipating it, has red circle around the building's layout to catch Sukuna off guard and have it explode on his back. This allows Gojo to land a black flash that actually knocks out Sukuna, causing Maharaga's wheel to fall, only for Maharaga's wheel to still spin and the Shikigami is summoned to slash at Gojo's chest. Despite the presence of Maharaga and his dwindling cursed energy output, however, realizing that he wasn't actually guaranteed to win this fight only made Gojo more determined as he recalls Toji. He manages to stun Maharaga, but before he could launch a full charge red, Sukuna regains consciousness and uses rabbit escape to make him miss his aim. As he engages Maharaga, he withstands Sukuna's max elephant mimicking piercing blood. Realizing that Sukuna is now freely using the ten shadows as Maharaga can now pierce through his infinity. Tsukuna summons fusion beast Ajito to make the fight 3 on 1. Although outnumbered, Gojo manages to avoid Maharaga and Ajito's attacks while also reacting to Tsukuna's attempt to surprise him before launching red, but it proves inefficient with Gojo's output weakened and Maharaga having began to adapt to it. Gojo realizes he has to take out Maharaga in one shot, even though he will require some time to charge up his unlimited hollow technique and his opponents are trying to disrupt the process. He manages to deliver attacks on Ajito even ripping off its tail with a black flash, but it quickly regenerates as Gojo realizes Ajito combines the power of Round Deer, Morning Tiger, Great Serpent, and Nue, which means he has to destroy it one shot due to its reverse curse technique, meaning it can not only heal himself, but also Sukuna. However, as he focused on Ajito, Maharaga channels Sukuna's curse technique to cut off his right arm, and Sukuna alongside Maharaga briefly pummels Gojo. But Gojo, having had enough of Ajito, unleashes blue at maximum output to crush Ajito completely. Performing two black flashes allows Gojo to sharpen his output back and regain his arm, and after landing two more black flashes on Maharaga, he proceeds to chant incantations to power up red further. But rather than aiming it at Sukuna, Gojo aims the curse technique reversal above to fuse it with the previous maximum output blue that crushed Ajito. He manages to intercept Maharaga's attempts to cancel out blue through blue's high-speed movement, and though Sukuna attempts to launch piercing blood, Gojo simply chants a few more incantations that greatly amplifies Blue's power, allowing it to absorb piercing water as it fuses with red. The strengthened purple destroys Maharaga and a major part of Shinjuku in a massive explosion of cursed energy while critically injuring both Gojo and Sukuna and tearing off one of the latter's hands. However, Gojo is only moderately injured as purple didn't affect him nearly as much due to it being made up of its cursed energy and his output is now back as he heals himself. After the battle continues, Gojo ultimately meets his end as Sukuna sliced through his body and arms with Maharaga, but still congratulated him for his strength and efforts as Gojo dies. Gojo wakes up in the afterlife where he's greeted by Geto and his deceased allies. There, he has a conversation with them about his fight with Sukuna and where he should go next, north if he wants to start anew and south if he wants to return to his old self.
Did you enjoy our video? Well, then be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi. And make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.